Polito. I am Kelby Anderson and I serve as the Community Policing Officer for the Choctaw Police Department. The tribe has partnered with WeTip to create an anonymous tip line that allows you to report crime in your community without having to reveal your identity. You will remain anonymous and may be eligible for a cash reward up to $1,000. Today we are asking for your help in solving the 1994 murder of Larry Mingo of the Tucker community. Bradley Alex was a tribal police officer at the time of the incident. He was the first officer to respond to the scene of the crime. On December 3rd, 1994, uh, me and my partner, we were driving here on uh, West Tucker Circle Road. Uh, we were uh, coming from uh, Highway 19, and we came on the body of Larry Mingo, who was uh, on this uh, uh, paved road. And uh, he was in uh, bad shape. He was bleeding. We uh, assisted him as much as we could, and we called an ambulance, and that uh, we waited. He was still alive when the ambulance came and took him. And he, uh, he was facing uh, this direction, his uh, fa uh, facing that direction, and uh, just in front of uh, almost uh, close to, uh, to the driveway where he uh, resided with his family. And uh, about a couple of weeks later, that uh, a witness it came forward and informed me that uh, he had seen who had done it and that he had picked him up twice, uh, slammed him on the pavement twice. He was uh, up there behind me, somewhere up on top of this hill, and he had uh, uh, informed me that uh, nobody saw him, but he saw who did that to him. And uh, possibly that uh, if he has uh, told somebody else uh, uh, the information, uh, please contact Choctaw Police Department. My name is Lisa Logan. I am the older sister of Larry Mingo. Larry was a very outgoing person. He um, was very quiet. He loved to play basketball. He started playing ball at a young age. And at the age of um, 15, Larry started working. He um, dropped out of school so he could help take care of the family. And at the age of 16, I talked to him about um, going to Job Corps. He agreed. He went to Job Corps for a long period of time. He graduated from Job Corps. He got his um, carpentry and welding license there. And he... Um, also got a scholarship to play with Georgia Tech. At the time, um, Larry had came home. It was the day before Thanksgiving. He um, brought all his plaques, his certificates, and he gave it to us and told us this was for us, that you know he was doing this for us. At that time, him and my brother had got together and they were celebrating. Everybody was happy for him, you know, and he um, just was being himself. He was, he, he was just too happy, you know. He, it, you couldn't even explain, you know, how he felt, how we felt, you know, and he just, <laughs> it's just, it's hard to explain the feeling we had at that time, not knowing that um, this incident would happen, you know, that night was the last night that I was able to talk to my brother. <laughs> my name is uh, David Mingo and I'm uh, Larry Mingo's uncle. And um, I helped raise him. And, um, and what I wanted to share about him was that uh, the night before this incident that led to his death, um, 
um, I was at home and he came over to my mom's house, which is his grandma, and he loved his grandma. And mainly because his grandma liked to discipline him all the time when he acted up, but he always had that respect for my mom. And he had came home that night and brought some food for my grandma, and, and I was walking back into my room, and I hadn't seen him for a while. And he said, Uncle D, um, he says, I, he said, you want something to eat? And I said, no, I said, I'm okay. And as I turned my back around, um, the start, the, the start the, um, and the urge for me to, to, to talk to him and, and was there and it was really overwhelming and I went back to bed and I kept thinking about it throughout that night. And then that's when they went ahead, or they had found him uh, close to my mom's house, and it looked like he was trying to crawl back home. It took me years to get past that, and um, um, I thought it would, I got over that. But having this opportunity and asking people out there to help us, this was our first major death in our family, and it really hit us hard. And I don't think all of us have recovered from it at all. We still got, I mean, questions that haven't been answered. Uh, we carry it with us. Um, we miss him a great deal. And, and I remember all the things that he used to do as a little boy, and I have fond memories of him. And, and I know one thing, that he loved his brothers and sister. He loved his mom, he loved his grandma. And I knew he was proud that he was gonna play basketball, because that's all he did. He played basketball all the time. And uh, everybody re respected him for that. And I do know that when he did pass, he, in the Chukta way, he came back and gave me some signs that he was okay. But even that, doesn't fill that emptiness that this family has. And again, I ask anybody out there that has information, please contact We Tip. This will help us out. We need closure. If you have any information about the Larry Mingo case, please call 1 8554 Res or visit the We Tip website at www.wetip.com. No one will ever ask you to reveal your name, and you could receive an award. You can help us find the people responsible for Mr. Mingo's death and bring them to justice.